episode of Tiny Nest. I'm Kiva. And I'm Jake. This series is following our tiny house project from the early stages through to completion and beyond. This episode is about structural reinforcement. Alright, so the time has come to start securing the framing to the trailer. And in previous episodes we talked about the flange that runs along the long edge of our trailer and how on the short edge of the trailer there is no flange. But uh, if we go two inches in on this bottom plate and drill down, we can uh, fasten into the floor framing, the two by six on edge, that's below. So to deal with this edge, uh, we needed a really long screw, obviously two bottom plates and the subfloor, uh, and then get a good bite into the framing below. So uh, looking for a fastener, I found these. They're a GRK brand structural screws, and there's lots of different lengths. This is an eight inch, and it's a three eighths diameter. And people are using these a lot now instead of uh, lag bolts, which are those big beefy uh, sort of bolt screw hybrids um, as a, a means of, of getting some really strong fastening. So I got some of these and we're gonna pass them down. We're gonna drill right down through these bottom plates and get it right in to bite into the, uh, the floor framing below to fasten this edge down because the floor framing underneath there is fastened as you would have seen if you watched our floor framing video uh, with heavy duty hardware to the trailer uh, below. Now to deal with the long edge of the trailer that does have the flange, uh, in our structural video I talked about using Simpson strong tie hold down ties that are sort of a shoe thing where you pass a heavy bolt through the bottom and in our case would go through the flange and then the rest of it fastens with screws to a stud. And we were going to put one on the bottom and then on the same studs that we went on the bottom, we'd put one through the top plate and onto the same stud. Uh, and the idea there was to get an unbroken connection between the flange, the stud, up through to the top of the stud and then through to the top plate. Uh, but once I got my hands on these, I realized that we can basically achieve the same type of continuous connection. Uh, simply by using these. So same idea, uh, we're drilling through the flange and lagging these right up into a stud and getting a good several inches of bite into the bottom of the stud. And then what I'll do is take uh, another one on the top of the same stud, go through the top plate and into the top of the stud. So that same unbroken vertical connection from top plate all the way to the bottom of the flange can be achieved with these guys. So let us know what you think about this alternate uh, solution. Rather than using Simpson strong ties, uh, just fastening everything down with these structural screws. And keep in mind that we are planning on using structural strapping uh, diagonally on all the walls. And we can still add uh, even more structural uh, connection through the use of uh, aircraft cable or threaded rod or something if uh, we still feel that it needs uh, more uh, strength. We've gone through and fastened everything down permanently with nails, uh, the walls to each other, the bottom and top plates to each other, and uh, finished putting in those structural screws all the way on the bottom as well as uh, matching on the top. Now that we've finished framing everything, including the roof, uh, and fastened it all together, we're going to add some structural strength using some Simpson Strong Tie products. So on the uh, roof framing members, we're going to add hurricane clips and we have two different types just because of the amount of wood that we have to work with on the high side and the low side of the sloped roof. Uh, this is an H1 and this is an H2.5 and I'll show you uh, what it looks like once they're in. We used the H1 clips on the low side of the sloped roof and just tacked it into the top plate with the same uh, two and three eighths nails we ripped off the uh, nail gun strip. And then we use these inch and a half guys to nail into the actual joist itself. Also the one uh, nail hole that hung down uh, below the top plate, we just bashed and bent the uh, that little piece of the clip over the hammer and then put a nail uh, up into the, uh, the bottom of the top plate to secure that a little bit better.
Then on the high side of the roof, we had to use the H2.5 clips, just because there wasn't as much top plate to bite into. But we used the same nails on the top plate and to go into the joist as we did the other clips. In addition to the roof, we're also going to add some structural strength to the walls. Uh, in this case, it's another Simpson product. It's just a roll of metal strapping, um, 16 gauge in this case. And we're going to span it diagonally across each wall, uh, nailing to every stud that it crosses. And this will add a lot of strength to resist racking, uh, which could be a problem when you're hauling your tiny house down the road. Uh, the forces acting on it could try to basically pull the building out of square, and this is going to add a lot of strength uh, that it wouldn't have if it was just the, the wood framing alone. We placed the strapping basically anywhere that we could that wouldn't interfere with any windows, and we just nailed it down on all of the studs that it crossed using these nails here that we pulled off of the lines that we were using in the nail gun. We also wrapped it around every corner of the tiny house in at least one spot.